guys, episode 3 now of season 6 of May Meister's High School Kerfuffle, and last week we were playing Kicks, Chicks, or Quicks, depending on how you want to pronounce it. For an arcade game, this is a bit of a weird one. It has a game mechanic that's pretty much unique to this, and its sequels, whereas most other successful games have spawned many clones and evolved the concept. Somewhere this did see clones though was on home systems, but really the game remained pretty much the same. It wasn't until Vol fired that things moved on, but that game is also from Taito. Something totally necessary to get the most out of this game is planning a strategy. Just capturing parts of the playing field until you reach 75% isn't going to cut it. This game is all about building thin structures out from the edge with the fast draw in such a way to create areas for the kicks to get trapped in, allowing you to close off larger areas with the slow draw. The slow draw gives you double points and every percent over 75 that you capture you get a thousand points of bonus, so on the first couple of single kicks levels, doing over 25,000 on each level is quite doable. Once the two kicks appear, then you have the option to split them, which instantly ends the level, or capture them both in 25% or less of the screen. If you split them, then your subsequent score doubles, so it's very much risk and reward. Two kicks makes it much more difficult, so my best came from me getting good scores on the first two levels, and then limping as far as I could before eventually dying. Not in that game, but another, I managed to fluke capturing the kicks in a tiny box and did 99% coverage. This yielded well over 30,000 points, but it was a feat I'm unlikely to repeat. Whether I enjoyed this game is another open question. It's a mix of satisfaction when you do well and bitter frustration when you lose. It certainly gets you to put that next credit in though, which is kind of the point of an arcade game. It definitely seemed like it grew on some people, so let's take a look at the scores. We had a comparable number of score submissions compared to last week at 18, and we had returns from Vintage Coin Up Reviews, who didn't play last week, and a new submission from My Retro Tech, who I know from Instagram. Scores were generally pretty competitive, with not much separating the top places. Steve is in 11th, with a pretty respectable 52,000. Colin and Bob join him in the 50,000s, and a few days ago, that was looking like a decent score. Things have ramped up in the final few days, with our final eight all doing over 60,000, including last week's winner Graham in sixth, and then our top five besting 70,000. Mark is in fifth, Ian is just ahead in fourth, having won Volfide back in season three, and then our top three is made up of Milthy in third, who is briefly leading with 76,000, which I think is his best ever finish. I'm then in second, after leading much of the week, but taking his first ever win is Paul E. Moz. I was hoping I might win this week, but it's well done to Paul, and this is a game that definitely grew on him after complaining about it early on. Here is the score distribution, and we see three distinct groups in the scores. On the left, we have our token efforts. In the middle, those that put a bit more time in. And finally, our group on the right, made up of people who were able to get on top of the basics of this game. Paul and me are in the same bin, but we're barely separated from the five people in the previous bin showing that it was a close one this week, and victory was by a narrow margin. And now, the difficulty curve. Here we can see how those three groups translate into big jumps in score. Going from a first few plays, to beginning to understand the game, will get you over the first barrier, from around 20,000 to 35,000. And then a bit more time, will jump you up again to around 50,000. Beyond that, it's a more gradual increase, reflecting fairly linear improvements that can be achieved just through greater experience and judgement of how the kicks moves and how much of the screen you can capture at any one time. Now that we've had a second week of scores, we can take a look at how the table's doing. We have movement throughout the table, which is typical of the early season. League Z and Man Cave are up 1, Retro Arcade Challenge is up 5 into 13th, and KMA is up 2. In the top 10, our big movers this week are 3rd place Milthy and this week's winner Paul, both up 5. At the top, we have a new leader too. Graham's comparatively low score has seen me creep ahead after back-to-back -back second places. Like the early part of last season, it's nice to be topping the table, but I'd be surprised if it lasts. With this week wrapped up, we're now on to 1982. Robert collated a list of every game we've played over the seasons, and 1982 was by far the most popular year, where we've had 12 games, meaning many of the heavy hitters have already been had. I certainly struggled to choose a game I really cared about. I've had 15 suggestions, making it 17 slots total after Paul's win. No game proved hugely popular, 
Xevious, Burger Time and Moon Patrol all got suggested twice, and that win for Paul means that Bubbles gets three slots. So let's set things going and see what we get. There we go. What are we going to get? Okay, so Paul has been lucky. I mean, that win has trebled his chances of coming up. So we've got um, Bubbles. So I had a quick look at this game this morning because um, I hadn't heard of it before. Um, you play as a bubble and your aim is to try and clean a sink, I think. Um, so yeah, I'll go um, make a short video and be back in a sec. So this week's game is Bubbles, released by Williams Electronics in 1982. If you were asked to name a Williams game, you might say Robotron, Defender, Joust maybe. No one is going to say Bubbles. But Williams were known for their excellent gameplay, and it seems this one is no different. It ran on Robotron hardware, so it's available on the Mister, and you can hear some of the sounds which are the same. The controls are simple, with just an 8-way joystick to control the movement of your bubble. The aim is to collect the ants, crumbs and grease from the screen to make your bubble bigger. Levels are either cleared by collecting all of the items, or once your bubble is big enough, then dropping into the drain. There are also cleaning ladies that appear that you can collect for a bonus, which also give you a broom to push the enemies and kill the cockroaches that climb out of the drain. Something that has contributed to its obscurity is the lack of home versions. Other Williams games saw ports and clones aplenty, whereas Bubbles remained in the arcade, meaning fewer people were exposed to it. A quick play, and this was better than I was expecting. I reckon most people will be unfamiliar with this, but find it at least reasonably enjoyable. We'll be playing with default settings as usual, and it seems there were red and blue versions of the ROM, but many I've found don't seem to annotate, so I assume there's a standard one for most people to use. Even Twin Galaxies doesn't stay to ROM. Also, please get your 1983 games to me for next week. Ian, you can finally submit Uncle Pooh. I'm hoping this will be a bit of a dark horse game, and most of you will enjoy playing. I'll be back next week with the scores, and I'm thinking about debuting a new type of graph. See you then. <laughs>